Once again, looking at the Suez Canal and the Ever Given, that colossal cargo ship that has blocked the waterway for nearly a week now. Here's the good news from the Suez Canal. Crews have managed to partially refloat the Ever Given overnight. The stem, uh, sorry, not the stem, the stern of the vessel, it's been moved out about 100 meters clear, so it's kind of sort of swung into the middle of the waterway. They've been working with dredgers and special vacuums, literally vacuuming up all of that sand. The Suez Canal Authority says the Ever Given's positions have been corrected by about 80% so far, but it's that last 20 because the bow still stuck. High tide, spring tide, they hope will help dislodge the ship even further. But let's bring in Tessa Arsili in all of this because she's been watching all the details for us with more on the latest efforts. Indeed. I mean, when you describe, you know, what they're doing, it really is a Herculean massive effort. And, and this little bit of good news that we had from today, it's uh, it was what's needed after six days of basically nothing much. And really, they've been relying on tugboats, tiny boats, compared to this massive 200,000 ton ship, one of the largest in the world, in fact, Heather. So they've been trying, as you say, to move this ship, uh, to, to move its direction so that it's facing forward rather than facing diagonally, because that's how it is stuck. But as you say, the bottom part of the ship they believe right now is still stuck in the soil so while there is about a hundred meter distance now from the edge there is still uh, it, it is still quite stuck so they are still trying to get to the to the end of this now they are relying on high tide they're relying on the full moon they're relying on nature to help get this out now this is it, it is really a massive uh, situation and there are 20,000 containers on that ship there were plans to remove some of them to make it easier make it lighter so that the tugboats can can have an easier time but with the difficulty in this this, Heather, is that it is in a part of the world where you don't really have the necessary equipment to unload ships or, in fact, to do what they're doing now. So that's why it is taking a lot of time. There are more than 300 vessels waiting uh, outside there to, to get through this waterway. So when you look at the live images that we're seeing now, even if the ship has moved a little bit, it is still blocking the entire waterway. So that's where, where we are now, Heather. They're about a couple of hours into the operation today on Monday. But where we are now and all of those hundreds of ships waiting to get through this is having such a major impact on global trade tessa we know what are they saying about immediate and long-term impact of all of this it is, and the impact, it's quite hard to get your, your head around it because if you think of just the, the massive amount of trade that actually passes through this, it is worth $9 billion a day, and that is around $400 million an hour. That is a lot of money going through this, and also around 50 ships go through that every single day, and now you have about 300 waiting. Uh, so people in the industry are already talking about the effects, the domino effects of this, because it's not just about getting it done and, sw and, and everything switches back on. You've already had the effect of the cost uh, of six days of waiting around there. Major uh, shipping companies have rerouted some of their vessels going down the Cape of Good Hope, even if it adds two weeks uh, to their schedule. They understand from an engineering point of view that this could take a long time. So, you know, nine, uh, $9 billion a day, that is a lot of money. There's also 12% of global trade plus 7% of the world's oil. We were looking at um, Lebanon and Syria already cautioning that they might experience shortage uh, of oil because because of what's happening in the Suez Canal. So all eyes uh, on this uh, situation there, and it is really important uh, to, to global trade, considering the pandemics are already, had already stalled uh, global trade, Heather. You know, and still, they have to investigate how this even happened, Tessa, don't they? Because, you know, there was the exactly. storm, but now they're <laughs> saying there may have been other factors at play. So that's even to come. First things first, get this out of the sand. Thank you, Tessa Arcelia in London for us this morning.